having a chart that has got data in the uh, JavaScript for the page is awkward. I've discussed it with a few people in class. You can just imagine though that it's going to be someone's job to update the data and you don't want them to go fiddling around in the JavaScript. It's way too easy to get commas and brackets and stuff wrong and then break it permanently. So the better solution is going to be if we can get our chart to pull its data from somewhere else. This is built in to the Google Charts API. I'm just I'm not going to do it here, but I'm going to give you a nudge in the right direction. Uh, looking down the visualization options, one of the ones that is available this or the example sorry is this data source request, and this is what I've opened here. So it's showing us uh, a chart happens to be a population kind of chart and this is uh, the information and over here it says to see the data this visualization uses browse to this spreadsheet so let's just have a quick glance at that spreadsheet this might take a moment to load just be patient um, and what we're going to there we go there's the data what we're going to try and do is something similarish with our own so we've got to think about where we're going with this um, obviously we've got some data here and that's creating a table. So var data equals response dot get data data table. And then we're doing a new Google visualization based on that. So probably we'll be able to do something similar to that with our pie charts. You need to kind of look closely at the JavaScript for the pie chart and see how that works. So this is going to be the slightly tricky bit, I reckon. I don't know. Um, and I think the way forward at this point is to say, okay, I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have my own spreadsheet. So go into your Google Drive account. It comes bundled with your Gmail account. You just need to go over to here and, and find it if you're in Gmail. And create a spreadsheet. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and just grab their data. You've always got to do the simple thing when you're trying to make things work. So you do exactly what they've done and uh, then try to adapt it to what you've done. So what I'm trying to do here is have the same, you know, the steps are probably going to be that I have the same kind of chart um, as they, they have here, but instead of based on their spreadsheet, based on my spreadsheet, and then perhaps adapt the data in that chart and then say okay how can I do a different kind of chart instead of an intensity map do a, a pie chart uh, and and so on you know I'm, I'm not going to show you how to do it because I think that's what this uh, this learning should be about so I'm going to save that so, uh, no which one's mine this one's mine I'll keep track of that uh, so this is going to be my test spreadsheet um, I will point you towards this share option at the moment I can it's only it's private you know just like any file no one can see except me but I can change that and I can make it public uh, on the web I think is probably the right one might be think public on the web and save that uh, now when I made it public it gives me a link here um, which is the, the whole URL interested the same as uh, is up here this key is really interesting um, I'm looking at this one here they've got a key involved as well I wonder if we can do something around that uh, and looking at their visualization query they've got the key and they've said the range of data b1 to d11 and so on so you kind of have to fiddle around with all of that lot. It isn't straightforward, but uh, the intention is that you get to a point where you can do this for yourself and also document the process so you can say, this is what I had to do to make this work. If you can do that, that's wonderful. You need to show me and then I'll give you the next thing to do because I think you're kind of good enough at that. Uh, if not, keep fiddling around and if you get really stuck, do ask for help in class.